right, it's live improv from New York City. And I don't know about you, but the world is a place that just makes me think sometimes. There's a lot to think about. And there's a lot of stuff that keeps us from thinking. So we're all going to work together as a cast to uh, to dig deep, to dig deep and, uh, and think of some stuff. You don't hear about people who are just thinking lately. Um, when you actually... What keeps you from sitting down and thinking? My bad back. Your bad back. You just got a just got just crunchy bad back going on in there. Um, what guy? What gave you that bad back? What was the thing that uh, that set that thing off? Was it work? Was it life? Was it uh, amorous? endeavors what was it Luis Valenzuela don't tell us who Luis Valenzuela is somebody else who's not Barry tell me who you think Luis Valenzuela is, should be he's a Mexican sex symbol <laughs> ah excellent somebody else tell me what do you think of when you either Margaret or, or or Bridget what do you think of when I say the word sex symbol Margaret Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> Good. That's it. Was sex symbol? That's a tough one. I like it. And um, uh, Bridget, what's something that's tough? Um, jeans. Jeans. All right, Morgan. All of these things are the fodder from which you can deliver onto us a monologue that tells us what that makes you think of. We're all going to mute our microphones and you're going to take it away. You know, that makes me think of the time that I tried to pick up this little boy in the museum and, uh, yeah, I, I, obviously the way that I approached it was incorrect because I pulled a muscle in my back. So I was joyful about trying to help this little boy see this exhibit and then in intense, intense pain because I had pulled something by lifting a child, which I had never done before, but I thought because this child couldn't see, I, I needed to be the one to lift this, this child. Yeah. So the child got to see the exhibit and I ended up walking through the museum, like just, just in intense pain. Like I can't even remember the rest of the museum because of the pain. And, you know, it also occurs to me that I should have asked, you know, my mom for like a painkiller or something, or like, maybe we should have gone home. I have no idea. Uh, but yeah, that like walking around the wrong, like just bent over was, was not the best experience. So I don't, one, one, I don't recommend lifting people uh, using your neck muscles. And then additionally, I also recommend using core strengthening exercises. Oh, oh, Samantha, I've done something to my back again. Samantha, I can't hear you. We're in an art gallery, shh. Oh. <laughs> Can you move? I can't see the Mona Lisa. You're bending over in front of her. What's more important, me or the Mona Lisa? Oh, for God's sake. When I agreed to come on this trip with you, I thought you'd at least bring some painkillers with you or something. I, let me get you something out of my purse. Here, take a couple of these <sighs> I want, and move just a little to the left. I just want to see the, br the brushwork of Leonardo you there. took the whole you took the whole bottle for god's sake well you took me a whole bottle oh, for 
God's sake, I meant you to do a ladylike gesture of one or two. Or we better get you to a hospital because you are going to start acting extremely strangely any minute. Oh my God, it's the Mona Lisa! Ah! No, it's behind you is the Mona. I'm not the Mo Mona Lisa. Oh no. Oh. No, let, turn around. Shh. This is an art gallery, for God's sake. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, look at Samantha. Look at that. Yeah, yes, it's lovely. Take your voice down. Shh. Why, why are you shushing me? Because everybody in here is French and they've got manners. They don't have manners. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> she doesn't mean. <laughs> Who mean it? Sally, oh, move it. I can't see oh anything. My God. Look at that. That's gorgeous. Yes, that's Michelangelo. It's very gorgeous. It is, yes. Maybe we should go and try to get back to the hotel before you collapse. No, I'm having a great time. I don't want to go back to the hotel. Oh, God, no. Get, get, get off that. That's a statue, please. That's a work of art. Any minute now. It, Sally, please. Oh, my God. Not the plinth. That's marble. Oh, my God. I don't know what the French is for marble, but get off. God, this is a nightmare. Let's, let's go get a drink. Okay. Yes, I need a drink. Let's go to the... Uh, Oué le bar. Oh. That makes me think of um, my honeymoon when my husband and I went to Italy. Uh, we went to Rome and we went to Florence. And uh, when we were in Florence, we went to the museum where Michelangelo's David um, is on display. And you walk down the museum and there's these unfinished sculptures by Michelangelo on the way. Um, and then you see David and he's super tall, like tall, larger than life statue. And also like on a pedestal that's up and you gaze up at him like a Greek God. And it's just, I mean, of course, you know, physique wise, he's is like a Greek God. He's like amazing and beautiful. But then you come to the side around at the side and you look at his face. And his face is so intensely angry. Like most of the photographs I had seen before that were always of the front of his body, which is all about the Renaissance and this beautiful appreciation of physique and everything. But it was the emotion of his face that you rarely get to see in pictures that struck me so deeply when I was seeing it in the museum. And I just wanted to stand there and stare at his angry face, which in retrospect seems a little odd, like, I just wanted to stare at somebody being angry, but you know, there's so much about the artistry of the Renaissance, where they talk about the proportions and all those things, but the way they capture the humanity, like in the Mona Lisa, the expressions, the faces that make the people real is, is amazing. I am so strong. I finally have a muscle. Oh, Larry, I can't hear you. Sorry, Jess, I, I guess I was just so taken back by your strength. I, That's okay, I Larry. Love, I love this honeymoon with you, Jess. I know, I just thought, you know, why not we're building a life so build our muscles right build okay so like obviously hopefully i have more than one muscle yeah there's tons of i don't know anything about anatomy yes that I metaphor think. about our relationship it's so strong so muscular thanks Lear. oh jess I want to carry your baby. Uh, well, he's not here right now, but when he, when Giorgio comes back, you can carry my baby. Because Lord. when we got together, right? 
you you knew that I was a single mother. But I mean, into the future, Jess. Well, we can carry him into the future as well, together. I, I, we need a stronger relationship than just one. We need like 27. 27? Yeah, Jess. That's yeah. a strong family. Uh, I'll I'm share. One. What? I'll well, share. But no, you go. What were you saying? Uh, I'll share the 27 with you. 13 or 14. I, you know, it doesn't matter. You know what? I'm going to hope for like multiples at once. Maybe that, you know what I mean? Because like it's in, it's in my family, right? So maybe, you know, start with like eight. Optometry, up, 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 a lot of kids. Yeah, all of them. Yeah, yeah. all of them. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, twins and triplets and quadruplets and quintuplets. Yeah, and one then, of those would be great. And that's you know, a lot of sex templates, Jess. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That goes without saying. Well, yeah. it's. I'm. I'm. I'm going to go work out at the gym. Get. I'm going to go have a bath. I'm tired. Okay. Yeah. You should be. I love you. Love you. Well. An art gallery in France makes me think of when we used to go and traveling overseas, which have, we have, I have not done in the last two years or rather a year and a half. But, and I suddenly thought of this time that years and years ago, I went, to, I went to Greece with a friend and we were going to go to the Mediterranean club in Corfu. And we went into a Greek restaurant and we had a really nice, nice Greek meal, which was great and really enjoyed it. And at the end, we asked the waiter for a Turkish coffee because that's what we called it. We didn't think of it as Greek coffee. We thought of it as Turkish coffee. And the waiter got so offended. He came up to us and he stood over us like this. And he said, Madame, we are in Greece. We don't drink Turkish coffee here. We drink Greek coffee here. And he brought us out. We were, he said, okay, okay. Greek coffee then. He brought us a Greek coffee and guess what? It tasted exactly, exactly like the Turkish coffee that we used to enjoy in Israel. Exactly the same. And then I realized that the Greeks and the Turks didn't really like each other. And probably still don't. I can't hear you, Mary. It's good. Oh. Mm. That's a South London Kalamata olive. Oh, it's glorious. Mm hmm. Oh. And up next, Northern Ireland pizza. I got yes. especially for you. Oh, how thoughtful. It's great speciality of the region, I'm told. <laughs> ah. Well, I brought something for you too, Mary. Oh, from your travels, I hope. <laughs> oh. Turkish delight, your favorite. Oh, well, I've never had Turkish delight. Uh. Well, you might know it as Greek delight, but it's really Turkish. Well, you know, they're sort of interchangeable. It depends on which one you say. But the point is, it's you'll love it. Mmm. Oh. Oh. Mmm. Mm. This is like a, a Moroccan delight. I've had one of these before. It's called a Moroccan delight. Mmm. Oh. Oh. Just like rename these things everywhere they go. Oh, these olives. Yes. Well, you can taste the River Thames in them, can't you? Oh, yeah. Kalamata. Mm. It's just such an English sounding name. 
That's right. Well, it's like the Northern Irish pizza. I mean, what next? And the toppings. Who would have thought potatoes? Love it. Love it. Yeah. Let's see. Oh. This is, this is a fish and chips pizza. What, you know? I have to say, though, I'm a little offended by the way you're holding it. Uh, we do use a knife and fork. Proper etiquette. Anything on the British Isles or Northern Ireland. Knife and fork. Oh. Yes. How genteel of you all. All that talk about pizza. You know, it made me think of, uh, of the obligatory trip I took when I graduated college to uh, Europe with a good friend of mine. And, you know, we traveled for five months, covered about 22 different countries, South Africa, or South uh, 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 in Africa and in uh, Asia and in Europe, but we got, we wanted to go to Greece. We wanted to catch the ferry to Greece. So we got on the train and the ferry to Greece is in Brindisi. And so we traveled by train all the way to Brindisi. We got off the train. We'd slept all night. It was pretty uncomfortable. And we started looking for the ferry. Well, after a couple hours, we couldn't find it. And we finally stopped a very nice Italian Brindisian man and we showed him the map. And he said, no, Brindisi, the body, this is body. We had gotten off on the wrong station. But the reason why it makes me think of pizza is that that was the first time in my life in Bari, Italy, where I bought a kilo of pizza. Now, I had purchased other things in kilos, but never pizza. It was delicious, too. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh my God, you have to taste this pizza. Oh, thanks. Oh, you know, who would have thought potatoes? I mean, you, you'd think that there was a limitation on starch, you know, like, but it just, you know? Oh, Sarah, there can never be a limitation on starch. Yeah, you know what, I think, Mm. You know, Robin, the more starch, the better should be. Absolutely. Should be a thing, you know. Here's an idea. Pizza with potatoes and spaghetti. Triple oh. starch. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that way uh, you have a couple meals in one, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I think we should start a new trend, invent new pizzas. Ah, okay, okay, let me, well, now I gotta think of one. Uh, you know, because I'm Canadian, I think it should have Canadian bacon uh, and not pineapple uh, because nobody likes fruit on their, yeah, right? Yeah, see? Weird, um, very weird. Um, bacon, bacon and bacon. Just, just freaking. Loads of bacon. Canadian bacon and non-Canadian bacon. Okay, any kind of bacon. Just yeah. put the pork on there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, just pile it on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, who needs, Frank, you know what? Who needs diets? Like, who needs... Exactly. Just bacon, <laughs> potatoes, and friggin' pork. Anyway, that's all I have to say. <laughs> oh, my God, all that food talk. And talk about starch that makes me actually think of when i was a kid and the women in my family we were a very poor family and some of the women in my family took in washing they did other people's laundry at our house at the kitchen sink 
And this new invention, they were always starching men's shirts. Men's shirts and collars had to be starched. All of a sudden, artificial silk was invented. And it was a big thing to have an artificial silk shirt. And one day I thought I'd help out the ladies and get some brownie points by ironing. And I had never really much experience in ironing, but I'd watched and I ironed an artificial silk shirt with a hot iron off the stove. And as I put it on the shirt, I literally saw it before my eyes begin to shrink because you don't iron artificial silk. And this was the 60s when it was pretty primitive stuff. And this man had paid for my mum to <laughs> clean his clothes and she had to return his shirt that was like for a little dolly by the time she brought it to him. And luckily the man thought it was very funny, but uh, I was in a lot of trouble for trying to be a helpful girl and get some brownie points. Never works. Hey, Christine. These artificial silk wounds, they'll do the trick, huh? Oh. Oh, Jerry. I can't believe you have them. They're, they're like the latest. Yes. You know, Christine, we, we could make a mint with these artificial silk worms. Well, I, I don't know, Jerry. It's, it's kind of risky. New technology always is. Well, I want you to stop all the ironing that you do all the time. Iron with these silkworms. The world is our oyster. Oh, no, Jerry, you're always such a dreamer, and I admire that about you. But but the iron, this iron, is it's 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 firm. It's real. It's like it's hot. Your your silkworms. I I don't know. But Christine, you work so hard. I I want to give you the best life I can. And this is how with the artificial silkworms. I love, I love, I appreciate it, Jerry. I love that you do, but every year you have a new plan to make it rich, to make it big. I just, I can't go through it a fifth time. Look, okay, the, the robotic, Ferrets didn't work out really well. I know that. I, 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 they, they kept collapsing. But these worms, these worms are something else, Christine. Well, then they're before that, before the robotic ferrets were the tap dancing rabbits. Uh, yeah, I, I, I did make a few shekels on their lucky rabbit's feet. Yeah, uh, but uh, that's only after they ate us out of house and home. And before that, it was the um, gym, like, what, what's the word I want? The, the trapeze artist cats and cats. You can't get cats to do everything, anything in concert. I, at the time, I was frustrated, but you were so sure, Jerry, so sure. This is it. This is the one. Trust me, Christine. I'll be back with my worms. Okay. And that's what we think about that. Hey, they're going to bring the whole cast back for a, uh, to introduce them and give them, get them a round of applause. Yay, you! Well done. <laughs> well done. And uh, I would just like to uh, 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 Called the boat again. Uh, thank you so much for your work, and it was really fun. It was it was it was great work. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you, Margaret, and thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, EJ. Thank you, EJ. Uh, thank you, Bridget, and thank you, Barry. 
Uh, listen, I, whoa, we moved around again. I, I am your host, Scotty Watson, and uh, this has been Friday Night Live Improv from New York City. You come back every week to this page and see more. Um, so thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Seymour will be here. Seymour <laughs> will be here. Thank you.